Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today what we're going to do is put on a brake booster. A brake booster is used for your power brake system. It works off of vacuum. And I know that mine is going out. So how can you tell when your brake booster is going out? Generally, the vehicle, mine, it's been turned off for a while. Normally, you would get about three presses before your brake pedal got hard or really stiff. Normally, it would be like a, a one, like a tss, and then a tss, and, tss, and it'd be kind of hard. But I'm just assuming and guessing mine's about to be hard from the get-go. Yep, it's hard already. It's hard. For me, what's been happening is I've been hearing a hissing when I turn the truck off. When I turn the truck off, I hear a small hiss, and when I press the pedal, it goes from soft to hard, and it quits hissing. So I've got a little bit of a leak, probably in the diaphragm of the brake booster. One more thing I might add is what initially led me to this is I heard a hiss when I cut the truck off, but my idle had increased a little bit. So I would go out there and adjust the idle on my Weber, bring it down, and thought I'd fix it, but it still idled up a little bit sometimes. I lubricated my linkages thinking, oh, it's hanging. But I could pull on the throttle, um, throttle shaft on the carburetor, make sure it's all the way closed. I just know that the idle was a little more, you know, turned down than normally I do, and it was still at about a thousand. So what's happening is it's getting such a slight vacuum leak from the brake booster that it's increasing my idle. So I'm pretty sure when I replace this booster, everything will go back to normal and I'll actually have to idle it back up a little bit because I have it turned down right now. And the vacuum leak is making it idle a little higher. Okay, this is my daily driver. This is not my fancy truck. So don't beat me up about how dirty it is under here. But this is my brake booster. And this one is not the original. I actually replaced this some time ago. I'll have to look and see when and post it in the video. Uh, and when I did it, this is, was a new master cylinder for my brakes. Um, I did the clutch. It's all probably in 2016. It's when I did a lot of different things to the truck. I'm gonna put on today is the one from Rock Auto. I think I spent about $53 on it and uh, it's from a brand called SKP which normally I'm not a big fan of but these have been getting a little more expensive and they want a core core was only $12 so I figured I would keep mine and maybe take it apart one day and we can actually find out what the problem was but today what we're gonna do I've already checked on it this new skp one has 13 millimeter bolts nuts actually and um what's on the truck is 12 millimeter that's that's more like what uh mazda is all about 10 12 14. so i'm thinking i'm going to use the original nuts that are 12 millimeter coming off the old stuff and put on this one so what we're going to use today is a 13 millimeter deep well socket, 12 millimeter deep well, a pair of needle nose because there's a pin um, holding, ooh, holding the brake pedal to everything. We'll have to pull the pin, pull the brake pedal off, brake pedal a loose, and then we got our 12 millimeter wrench if we need it. So let's get to it. So this is what I figure I'll do. Real quick, I think I'm gonna crank it up and demonstrate how this one is acting and maybe with this extra microphone I'll try to catch that hissing sound all right so it's running and you can kind of hear that one hiss but that's acting kind of normal Cut it off. And we're going to listen for that hiss. Hear it, and then it went away. 
Okay, I think I want to start out here and do loosen the master cylinder away from the brake booster. I want to keep these nuts because I want to reuse them since they are 12 millimeter. Looks like they got a little lock washer. Sit that right there. Need to remove the brake hose and it has the one way check valve in it. Yeah, we'll put that right there. Okay, so now, <clears throat> yeah, it's ready to come off. Okay, so I'm going to go under the dash now, and we'll take those four bolts loose, pull the pin that, that attaches it to the uh, brake pedal. This is actually going to be very difficult to film and do at the same time, because I don't have a good mount, and I have limited space but what we're going to do let's see if I can tell you so what we're going to do is take these 12 millimeter there's four of them nuts off and this this is a pin that goes through connecting it to the brake pedal and there's a, a pin to pull over here we're going to use our needle nose and pull the pin and then slide out the little bigger pin it's like a cotter pin or something and then we're going to pull the big pin out to free this up take our four bolts loose or nuts loose and then pull this straight out the front okay everything's loose inside so I should be able to move this master cylinder off, off to the side a little bit. Oh, uh, running into something. There we go. There. All right, so. What we're gonna do first, let's take this off. Now remember, these nuts are 13 millimeter. If you wanna use them, that's fine, but I'm gonna go back with the other ones that are 12, because I like to keep things kind of consistent with Mazda. There's no gasket here, so I'm going to try and salvage this little bit of a gasket and use it. Now this is the, when it's in the truck, this is where your brake pedal goes. And this is the pin I was talking about, the bigger pin that goes through. And then there's a small keeper pin so we'll have to transfer all of this to the other one okay let's see if we can break it loose that dude was a little stout now what I'm gonna do since it's broke loose right there is measure it <laughs> looks like it's about that much 11.81 I'm gonna reuse this one because I like it
You know, I said I was going to use it again, but that thing's got some rounded off edges. And this one's a 15, so I will be right back. Voila. I like it. Turns out, I really hate it when aftermarket supposedly OEM stuff don't, it doesn't match the size of the original equipment stuff. This should be like a 14, but instead it is a 5 8 There, that ain't going anywhere. Now I'm kind of wondering about the depth. I'm just going to kind of measure that from there to tip, and it looks like it's 8.8. .8. Let me just see what this one looks like from flat. Oh, yeah. It's looking fine. Can be adjusted, but it's fine. I need to see what that is and tighten it up. Okay, so there's a... <clears throat> see if I can get on camera here. So, I used my dial gauge. What do you call that, dude? Uh, yeah, you know what it's called. Anyways, from this flat surface to right out here, I got it the same as I do on the old one. And it was pretty much that way from the get-go. But it does have... Looks like I'm using a eight millimeter. Can tighten this up, make sure it doesn't come loose. So you want to hold this and tighten that up. Let's do that now. I'm gonna hold it with pliers. Well, that's all you can do because it moves a little bit. Put a little bit of that grease on the end there. Silicon, whatever it is. Alright, let's get it mounted up. Go inside, mount that up. Very hard to do. Oh, yeah. Let's see if I can get that pin shaft for the brake thing. Okay, so inside under the dash is very hard to film because of such tight quarters. Very hard to do, but it's done. And now we're going to bolt this up. on the threads Okay, it's in, a few scuffs, 
uh, probably didn't even take 30 minutes even with filming. So let's give it a go and see how it does now. Okay. Got the skeet seat skeets got the seat scooted back. Alright. So it's hard, it's stiff. That's normal. When you crank it, it should the vacuum that's pulled from the engine pulls on the diaphragm of the power brake booster, making it easy to press. So that's what we're looking for. Yep. It actually feels better than before, for sure. I like it. It's a little cold. I'll have to check on that idle later. Let's cut it off. What we should have is a soft then medium, then hard. And that's when it's pushing out the vacuum. One, two, three, four, hard. Yeah. It's working. I'm gonna cut it off and see if I hear that, uh, that hissing. Nope. Not at all. We fixed it. All right, guys, that'll do it for this video. Hope it was helpful to some of you that don't understand how power brakes work. And for those of you that have never replaced a power brake booster, well, you can see now how easy it is. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. That is super important to my channel. More important than subscribing. But if you like what I do and you want to see more and you want to get notified when I do a new video, just hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it.